Hey, it's Random Code here, and today I want to talk about the constraint layout in Android Studio, and we're going to be working inside our XML files in this kind of interface or graphical user interface from Android Studio that allow us to do drag and drop and simply create our placement for any of our components and constrain them to each other or to the parents. So the basic concept is, this is just a showcase from some of my last videos, doing Android Studio, we have this basic setup. And we see these constraints, so everything is positioned relative to each other. And in general, Android Studio is also doing a very good thing, is that, for example, in this case, this text area, text input, is constrained to be 50 something below our button. And the genius thing is that these 50 is not pixels, but it's something called DP, which is kind of like virtual pixels, which means these 50 is not going to be the same on all phones. It's going to be 50 virtual pixels relative to the size of the phone, which should allow us to have a more similar layout for each different rendered phone with different screen sizes. But let me actually just clear all of this and just showcase the basic setup if we want to do some constraints. And one thing to note, we have this magnet where we can either enable to auto connect to parent or not. So let me, for example, showcase when I input some text, it is now not constrained to anything. We could then, for example, add some constraints to right and left to keep it centered like this and we can constrain it to top and button so now have this text centered both horizontally and vertically but we could also just click the magnet and the button would now be constrained to the parent at least on the right and left side so it makes everything a bit quicker but you can do the same thing quite easily but let's just showcase an example which we would actually use some of the more complex things about this constraint layout. So let's have some plain text input. I would then, for example, constrain it to the right and left side to keep it centered. We then, inside this layout constrained widget, as mentioned previously, we can then define actually positions, maybe to the sides that this is not proper, but let's say we also have a button. We would then maybe like to, instead of constraining to the right of the screen, we'd like our button to be constrained to the right. We could move it, let's just do 25 dB from the right side out. We do the same thing on the other side. And we would then constrain our name input here to the button. So we now have this relatively nice setup. We can then change a few things. Because actually, if we just mouse over these different types of constraints, right now we're on wrap content. So the size of our button is going to be determined by, in this case, the text of our button. We can then also change this by clicking here to be fixed size. We will now manually have to input a specified size and we can do any size we want. We also have the next one, which is called match constraints. And to showcase how we can use match constraint, for example, let's say we remove this constraint of our text, so now it's just 25 dp from the left side. We then constrain our button to be connected to our text input. We then set this to be match constraints. And we can now, based on the spacing we want between the elements, so let's say again we want 25 spacing between the elements, our button will then automatically grow to fit in this area where we have 25 dp on the right and 25 on the left. So we could end up having a setup where we simply just define the spacing between the elements and all the elements are then automatically going to grow to fill out the space, which is actually quite nice. So let me just showcase it again because it's a bit confusing at first, but it's actually very powerful. So let's say we have some basic just uh, plain text input. We're constraining it to the left and to the right. And we wanted to fill the entire size of the screen. We would then set up wrap content. Instead of fixed content or fixed size, we would do match constraints. So now it's fitting our constraints. If we generally want some margin or some spacing in the sides, I would just simply add, for example, like 10 spacing on the right and 10 spacing on the left. And then what's actually very powerful about this is on larger or smaller phones, it would grow. So we'd only have a relative 10 dp on the edges. 
And if the screen is larger, our text input would grow. Small screens, it would decrease in size. So by doing a constraint, we can very powerfully set up a layout that is automatically responsive. And again, if we just want to add maybe, let's do this one on top. We'll do another 25 constraints. Then constrain this top as well. And notice when I'm constraining these elements to the top, it's automatically going to be constrained to the element on top of it, it's not going to be constrained to its parent, just like the outer constraint layout. It's automatically going to be constrained to this text input. So we could very easily define, let's do 25 here again, 25 here again. So we now kind of have this set up. This is constrained to the sides. To the top, it's automatically growing to fill the entire screen size. Have this one, have fixed sized, which is wrapping content. So it's based on like the standard size of some kind of plain text input. Button, which is now constrained to be matching the space. So we're just filling out the space here, which allow the button to be automatically sized. But let's, for example, just change now to be matching or wrapping content. Fixed size, fixed size, we can change any DB. We could do like 50, or so on. And notice it's still constrained to be 25 on the side, on both the right and the left side. And it's just relatively smart. Of course, sometimes it can be a bit janky, but in general, this is a very nice way of creating some layouts using some drag and drop. It's very intuitive, it's very visual. And then one thing to note, sometimes it's actually not everything we want to do that's doable. We can then have a look inside the code because this is just an XML file, which means it is actually just plain code based on some text. So we have this, for example, if we actually have a look at our button, for example, we can see actually all the same information we had inside our graphical user interface from Android Studio here inside our text in XML. We have the ID, we have the width we just defined, we have defined that it's wrapping the content, we have the margins on the start, top, end, kind of like the sides, we have the text on the bottom, we have the parent, and we have some other, what we're constraining to. For example, we're constraining to the ID of the elements we're constraining to, so the other, the other elements. So again, I think the graphical user interface is very intuitive. It's very nice and a quick way of being able to add a bunch of stuff. But if you want to be more precise, if we actually don't want to do it, something very specific. And also this allows for some very easy copy paste and changing a few numbers. But I think use the graphical interface to create the base functionality. Sometimes we need to add some numbers or do something very specific. We can then do the code. But in general, I think the Android Studio setup here is actually very good. This was my general introduction to the constraint layout in Android Studio. I hope you enjoyed this quick showcase of what we can do and learn how powerful it actually is if it's used right. So if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe and I wish you all a wonderful day.